<clears throat> well, start of another thrilling week here at uh, 42nd Street Pete's Grindhouse. And unfortunately, last week was so screwed up with me doing all that yard work, I omitted a couple things. One of them was uh, the passing of Robert Miller, otherwise known as Bushwhacker Butch. Uh, Robert was, I believe, 78 years old, I think, or something like that. He was, he, this was the first time he had come back to the States uh, because of the fan fests in California on WrestleMania weekend. He hadn't been in the States uh, for a while, and he was going to be reunited with his uh, tag team partner, Luke Williams. But unfortunately, he took ill and was rushed to the hospital and unfortunately passed away that weekend. Um, it's a strange journey for the sheep herders. Um, these guys basically, you know, started in the 60s around uh, in, in the uh, New Zealand, Australia, Pacific Rim area. Um, Luke Williams was Sweet William then. He had like long hair and uh, was dyed blonde. Uh, Butch was still Butch. They started, they, they were the Kiwis for a while, then the New Zealand sheep herders, then the sheep herders which became a blood and guts team. Um, they had barbed wire matches in, in the Mid-South area against the Fantastics, um, also in Puerto Rico. And uh, they went all over the country, worked all over the country. Butch got injured and went home and he was replaced by Lord Jonathan Boyd. Uh, that was when they were, I believe, in Southwest Championship Wrestling and they had a feud with uh, Bobby Jaggers because Bobby was, uh, if I remember right, they had a lot of flag bearers in their, in their careers. Um, Johnny Ace, uh, John Laurent, Uranitis um, was one of them. Jack Victory was another. And um, I'm trying to think, I just lost track of my thought here. Um, I believe Bobby Jaggers was the one down in uh, Southwest, and then they turned on him. They brought in Abdul with a butcher, all kinds of other stuff. Then they went to the WWW, uh, that was the WWF, as the Bushwhackers. And basically, Vince made them a comedy team of assholes. But in making them the comedy team of assholes, they probably made more money acting like fucking idiots than they did actually, you know, wrestling on their territories. And uh, Luke has been a booker all over the place, I think mo mostly in Puerto Rico. So, um, yeah, it's sad, you know, 78 years old, uh, unfortunately, you know, he never got back to, you know, see Luke again. But... Another wrestling item is that Jerry the King Lawler had been booked at Chiller Theater. He was one of the main guests. Unfortunately, a couple months ago, Jerry suffered a severe stroke. Um, and I am in touch with the promoter of Chiller Theater because we shoot the shit from time to time. And he was telling me that basically he knew Jerry was going to cancel. And he knows he's going to get blamed for Jerry canceling because he didn't tell anybody. But Jerry himself kept calling and saying he was going to make it. But all of a sudden, Jerry's speech got bad, and he's not going to make it. So, it is not the fault of the promoter. It is not the fault of the promoter. Also, if a celebrity's relative, son, daughter passes away and they have to cancel out. Um, the whole atmosphere of conventions has changed to the point where it's almost adversarial at times. And um, fans bitch about, you know, what's going on today and the prices and stuff like that. Well, got a flash for you, boys and girls. If you didn't pay the damn prices, you wouldn't have the prices as they were today. It's a simple thing. I did it. When somebody charged me $45 for signing an 8x10, I looked at him and said, hope you know somebody else named Pete, and walked away. Trouble is, some people have this, whatever the hell it is, um, they have to have that little connection for five minutes with a celebrity so they can tell everybody, we met and hung out. Yeah, sure you did. But, again, not the promoter's fault. Shit happens. Um, and, you know, it, it's becoming uh, more more obvious that I really don't want to be at conventions anymore. Would like to see some old friends and shit like that, but I'm not about to put up with any fucking bullshit for three days, so that's that. A um, while ago I was talking about a film called The Deserter, which was directed by Burt Kennedy. And I sort of did a little retrospect in my own head here about Burt, because Burt did a lot of films that wound up in grindhouse theaters. Um, especially his, his westerns, because, um, you know, just to skirt a couple, you know, he did this western uh, which is called Welcome to Hard Times. Hard Times is a town in the middle of nowhere, populated by 
very few people, and the mayor was Henry Fonda. The bartender was Lon Chaney Jr. Uh, the undertaker was Elijah Cook. All of a sudden, this outlaw comes riding into town, this psychotic man from Bodie, played by Aldo Ray, dressed completely in black. Well, the man from Bodie basically kills one of the saloon girls, is going to kill another one, kills the undertaker after he steals his horse and throws him in a carriage and sits him out riding, kills the bartender, played by Lon Chaney Jr., and then sets the whole fucking town on fire and then rides off. Well, Henry Fonda was the mayor and he chickened out. So that's the first part of the film with the old guard that is now all dead. The second part of the film brings in Warren Oates, uh, John Denner, Keenan Wynn, Royal Dano and some others, and they rebuild the town. But the man from Bodie's coming back. Now, the question is, will the mayor have the balls to actually stand up against this guy? you got to see it to, see it to understand it. Um, Bert also did a film. Um, Bert was actually really good friends with character actor Jack Elam. And he did this film called Support Your Local Sheriff, starring James Garner, Walter Brennan, Gene Evans, uh, Bruce Stern, Dick Peabody. It's, it's a who's who of character actors. Basically, there's a gold strike in this rundown town that's found after somebody's digging a grave. And they need a sheriff. And this guy Latigo, played by James Garner, comes in and he's, you know, he tells him he's going to Australia, but he'll take the job in between prospecting things. Well, there's a family that's basically holding up things, the Danbys. Um, Walter Brennan is Pop Danby. Bruce Stern is one of the other Danbys who was arrested for shooting a guy right in front of the sheriff. Uh, the other sons are Gene Evans and Dick Peabody. And, of course, this is all comedy, tongue-in-cheek. Uh, Jack Elam is Jug May, who is pressed into service to be the deputy, and that showcases his, his comedic talents. Um... It's a crazy film. Um, the jail isn't done yet, so when Bruce Stern gets locked up, basically James Garner paints a stripe in front of the cell and drops a couple things of red paint, tells him not to cross this whole thing. And uh, it's really a good, actually a good comedy western. You know, it's not blazing saddles, but it's a lot of fun. Which led to a sequel, Support Your Local Gunfighter, with pretty much the same cast in a different town with mining. Uh, Harry Morgan's back, because uh, he was in the first one. Henry Jones... Jack Elam's back, uh, Dub Taylor's in there, and um, they want a gunfighter to, you know, protect the town, and the gunfighter's name is Swifty Morgan, and Jack Elam is mistaken for a Swifty Morgan. Swifty Morgan is really Chuck Connors uh, playing heavy again. So this, this is another one. You know, this, the, the, the subplot is that James Garner is running away from this woman who he got drunk and promised to marry, and she had a huge tattoo put on his chest. He's trying to get rid of the tattoo and book out of town. That's the whole premise. So that's another one. Um, Burt directed a lot of other ones. Like I, I already touched on The Deserter, and that's not one of his favorite films because um, I got a book here. You might be able to pick this thing up. Not for the three ninety eight. I paid for it, but it's on eBay for close to that. Hollywood Trail Boss. And um, he basically covers The Deserter, Concrete Cowboys, uh, Wolf Lake, one of his... Uh, offbeat westerns. Um, Once Upon a Texas Train, he actually directed Hulk Hogan in Suburban Commando, uh, Kirk Douglas and John Wayne in The War Wagon, uh, then Ernest Borgnine, Struther Martin, and Jack Elam, and Raquel Welch, and Robert Culp, and Haney Calder, which I have already done, and uh, George Kennedy and Robert Mitchum in The Good Guys and the Bad Guys. That's another one. Um, basically, uh, Robert Mitchum is a sheriff that they're trying to force out of office and put in a younger man. And George Kennedy's an outlaw with David Carradine's gang, who they're also trying to force out because he's an older man. And there's a train robbery, and there's a lot of good stuff going on there. And there's the sleazy bad guy, John Davis Chandler, who shoots a guy in the back. So that's another good one. Haney Calder, I've already talked about. There was notes on the deserter, actually. Um, it's kind of interesting what happened. Uh... I can give you a couple clips here. Uh, arrived in Rome to direct the deserter called Carl Molden. Uh, Carl Molden wants $250,000 plus $1,500 a week for expenses and two, two first class tickets to Rome. Called Richard Boone was working. Called Ernest Borgnine was working. Called Mar 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 Marty Balsam and Marty Landau both working. 
uh, made a deal with uh, a pain in the ass, uh, John Houston. Let's see. Where else did he go now? Uh, tried to get Jack Elam and Bobby Walker Jr. Found locations. Uh, Bobby said no. Jack said no. Both working. In Madrid, trying to get Brandon D. Wild and Pat Wayne. Got him. Uh, Dino De Laurentiis act, hired acting Woody, Woody Strode for 75K. I had a meeting with um, Dino De Laurentiis. Got back a script for Frank Wolf, an actor I wanted in the picture, but he killed himself while he was working on another picture. Um, what else did they got here? Big, bad, beautiful Houston is a pompous pain in the ass just right for the picture. He plays a general and a deserter, leaving today. Chuck Connors called a younger pain in the ass. Um, Chuck told the hotel he wanted his water purified at least twice a day. Uh, let's see. Beep, 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 beep. Made a handshake deal with Dino De Laurentiis for a Rolls Royce if I rewrite the script for nothing. Uh, let's see. Some other stuff here. Went out to see the horses. Saddles are a problem. Seems we have 100 horses and they have bought only 25 saddles. Let's see. Where else do we go? There's a couple other things going on here. Um, first day on the picture, no problems. Our cast is going to be good. It rained out half a day. Dino wants to know how I'm going to cut the script to make up half the time. Here we go again. Nobody in this damn business worries about the right thing. Called everybody a no good son of a bitch and went back to work. Uh, let's see. Had lunch with Ricardo Montalban, wonderful actor and wonderful man. Uh, Chuck Connors, Ian Bannon, Brandon D. Wilde, Albert Salmi, and Woody Strode. Had to let them go early to see El Condo's fight at the bull, at, at fight a bull. Tomorrow they will work. Um, what happened here? Two dogs in the picture had a fight. One had to go to the hospital. Two actors in the picture had a fight. One had to go to the hospital. This is the worst crew I ever worked with. The cameraman is trying to win an Academy Award. The picture is rotten so far. But I have a chance when we get to the scenes, leaving for Matalago tomorrow. Worked in a driving rainstorm. Road washed out. Cass spent six hours in car getting the location. Sun came out at 3 o'clock. My star, Bakim Famu, refused to work. He left, left back for the hotel. Floodwaters cut us off from the hotel. He went by boat. It capsized. He swam ashore. Uh, let's see. Sun came out. Horse fell off a bridge. He lived. A miracle. Maybe the first one of this picture. I think we need another one when it opens. Finished mountain stuff. Rain 15 days. Leaving for Elmira. Finished picture. Was a struggle. I think I won, but you never know. A lot of crazy stuff in here. Um, he also, uh, he did the train robbers with John Wayne, and he wanted to cast Jack Elam again, but... Being that Jack Elam was in Rio Lobo and basically stole every scene from John Wayne, John really didn't want to work with him again. So, unfortunately, we, we lost Bert a few years ago, but I, I think I had said, you know, when I did The Deserter, that I can't remember Bert ever making a bad movie, and he was also a screenwriter, so uh, it's all good. So, that's our show for today. Uh, should, you know, this is beginning of the week. Hopefully it'll be a good week, and I want to work my ass off because I'm pretty much done with the yard work. So uh, maybe I'm going to work on some stuff for the magazine and some other shit. So until then, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for all the new subscribers coming in. And above all, stay safe, and we'll catch you on the flip side.